If uh, this process is so easy in a way, why do we all have a common ancestor? That, that's, that's a big one, why we don't have, uh, why we have a common ancestor. I mean, there's people who work on that. And in a sense, it's the roots of the tree of life where you come into coherency with one genetic code and one set of tools. But certainly, uh, the roots of the tree, the tree of life isn't really a trunk either. There was all this divergence. It's one of the great questions of biology but certainly early on everything was horizontally transferred and there was multiple starts and multiple failures all over the place. I mean, why, isn't there, why aren't there starts now? Um, generally, modern biology would eat them up and oxygen would interrupt with their chemistry. It prevents future starts. We'll open it up to the whole panel, but let me, let me address that, take the chairman prerogative to the last question because I was gonna ask the panel this, that a lot of people, uh, neuroscientists, uh, Tononi, Koch, uh, who are no slouches in neuroscience and a lot of other people, think that are panpsychists, they think that consciousness is intrinsic to reality, and Penrose and I have a similar idea for collapse, so, which would mean that con some form of proto-consciousness was present before life. Now, most of you, I think you would all assume that life emerged from consciousness, but you could look at it the other way around, in which case uh, life uh, could have originated and evolved because of feelings, for example, reward. I mean, all our behavior now is due to reward, right? Uh, rats in a maze, are, we come to this conference for reward of different sorts. So is it possible that life evo originated and evolved to feel good? Yes or no? 